Once upon a time, Starbucks came up with their most ingenious invention ever, the gift card. However, someone was able to hack it and get unlimited money on their account, which means unlimited coffee. So today we're going to be talking about exactly how they did it and going through the same exact process on a boba shop to try to get unlimited boba. So first, let's talk about the Starbucks situation. They have this gift card system that allows you to spend money, put in money, and transfer money from one gift card to another. So how can we hack this? First, we're going to need to know a vulnerability called a race condition. Imagine you have two people standing on one end of the room and on the other end of the room, you have a desk. Person one has a box that's labeled number one and person two has a box that's labeled number two. They both can run at around the same speed and what they're gonna do is both race to the table and put their box on the table. Whoever gets there last will put their box on top of the other person's box. So if number two is slower, the box on the very top is gonna be labeled number two. So before the race starts, can you tell me which box will be on top of the desk after the race? No, right, because they're around the same speed and you don't know which person will finish first. Sometimes when they race, the box on the top will be number one and sometimes it'll be number two. So that's what a race condition is, when two things happen and you don't know which one will happen first. So we're gonna continue off of this concept and talk about how it affects your computer. So on the computer, you might think that everything happens sequentially. Well, actually, there are many things happening on your computer at the same time. Like right now you can watch this video and you can play music on Spotify. And so how your computer can do multiple things at the same time is with something called threads. Each one of these threads on your computer's CPU can do one thing. So if you want your computer to do, be better at doing more things, you get a computer with more cores. This is what it means when Apple is telling you you can buy a computer with you know, some amount of cores because one core generally can run two threads. If you want your computer to be able to be really good at doing four things at the same time, you should get a computer with at least two cores because then it would have four threads. And if you want your computer to be really good at doing eight things, you would. Oh no! So in your computer, in the code, a race condition is when two threads or two things running at the same time change the same resource, like a gift card balance. Yeah, we're getting somewhere. So in the earlier example, now we can think of the people as threads. So we have thread one and thread two and the table as a number. Let's say it starts off at zero. So let's say thread number one will make the number one and thread number two will make the number two. So if thread two finishes last, the number will end up as two. So if we put this into code, can you tell me which value the number will be? Bro, you said one? What are you stupid? It's clearly two. But now, nah, if you run it more times, you'll see that around 50% of the time, it'll be one, and 50% of the time, it'll be two. But on each given individual time, you don't know which thread is gonna finish first. The point is that race conditions happen when you expect things to happen in order, but they don't because they're happening at the same time. In other words, this means that the code is non-deterministic because they're running at the same time or in parallel. For Starbucks, right? This shared resource is the gift card balance. So let's say you have your gift card, which has $100 and your friend's gift card, which has $0. Then on the Starbucks system, we're gonna be transferring $100 from our gift card to our friend's gift card. So in the code, this is how it would work. First, it's gonna check that you have enough money to send whatever amount you're trying to send. And in other words, that means that your balance is greater or equal to the value you want to send. Then once you pass this check, it's gonna subtract the value from your gift card balance and then add the value to your friend's gift card balance. So I would say this is simple enough, right? So if you send $100 to your friend, it'll end up with you having $0 and your friend having $100. But let's say that you have two threads doing this at the same time. Thread one is gonna go and check that you have enough money, subtract the money from your account, and then add the money to your friend's account. And then thread two is going to check that you have enough money, which you don't now because it is subtracted. So you have $0 and you're trying to send $100. And so it's just gonna end there because you don't have enough money to complete the transaction. And this is gonna happen most of the time, but there's a small chance that something else happens. Because they're running at the same time, thread one is going to check that you have enough money to send. But before it subtracts the money from your account, thread two is going to check that you have enough money to send which you still do because it hasn't been subtracted yet. 
So now both threads have passed the check to see if you have enough money. Then they'll both subtract $100 from your account and both add $100 to your friend's account. So now your friend's gift card has $200 and your gift card has negative $100 which you can throw away. So in this case, you just started off with a gift card that has $100 and you ended with a gift card with $200. And if you keep repeating this process like a million times, sometimes it's not gonna work like we said before, but sometimes it is going to work and you can end up with unlimited money. That's pretty crazy, right? So the person actually tried this and it worked. He got unlimited money on his gift card and it's also good because he told Starbucks about this vulnerability, so it got fixed and he didn't go to jail. Now, my favorite boba place is called Seven Leaves and it's actually so good. And they just so happen to have a rewards program where you can get points for free drinks and transfer the points to and from multiple devices. Kind of like how you can send money from one gift card to another. Also, YouTube wants me to tell you guys that this is for educational purposes only. If you do this maliciously, you will go to jail. Yes, jail. Just like my sexual predator, Uncle Kenny. Oh no! Okay, so now let's look at how the Starbucks guy did it. First, we need to understand that almost all communication done on the web is done with something called HTTP. It's the protocol that computers use to talk to each other on the web. So when you search up something on Google, what your browser is doing is sending an HTTP request to Google, and then Google will then reply with the HTTP response, which will have the results. On the Seven Leaves portal, this is what the transfer website looks like. And when we click this button, what our browser is doing is sending an HTTP request to Seven Leaves saying that we want to transfer the points. And then Seven Leaves will then send a response back to us saying that if it worked or not. However, we want to send multiple requests all at the same time to Seven Leaves. And this is pretty much physically impossible to do on the website because one, we can't click the button fast enough. And two, we don't have enough computers to click it that many times. So what we had to do is take out the middleman, which is this front end facing website, and instead send the actual raw HTTP request to Seven Leaves ourselves. And also this same concept is used to make these bots that buy like hype expensive stuff faster than everybody else when they drop because they don't have to click the actual button that says buy like everyone else and instead just send the actual HTTP request themselves. So now the question is, how do we get this HTTP request? And we're gonna be using something that we've used before on this channel and it's called a proxy. So when you use your computer, you're sending a lot of requests to your router. And what a proxy is, it's something that sits in between your computer and your router that can monitor all the requests going to and from your computer. And so with this proxy, we can see the request from our computer to seven leaves to transfer points and save it. All right, so now let's get this HTTP request to transfer our points. First, we're gonna start up the proxy, and then on the app, we're gonna request the transfer. Then we're gonna follow the website instructions and then just click this transfer button and boom, the HTTP request is right here. What? Then we can export it and save it for our code later. We can also now change this request to send to any device we want because it's just text. Okay, so now with this HTTP request, we're gonna send a ton of requests all at the same time to transfer points from our device with points to two other devices with no points. Let's call them device A and device B. So in theory, one thread is going to pass the check that we have enough points to send to A, and before it subtracts the points from our account, another thread is going to also pass the check that it has enough points to send to B. Then both threads will add their points to their respective devices and will end up with double the amount of points. Okay, so now let's try this out. I managed to get three devices and I got all the code set up. And so now I just gotta play this suspenseful music real quick and run this code. It's running. And oh no, it didn't work. Or did it? Now I'm just playing. Or am I? Now, nah, but for real, don't actually do this. And that's about it for this video. I hope you guys found it a little bit interesting and maybe learned something from it. Last thing is, is that I finally graduated from college, so I'll have time to make some more videos. And yeah, I'll leave all the code from the video in the description below. And that's about it. Peace.